In this video, I go through the second half of my microeconomics paper, the paper which I achieved 78 out of 80 in my 2022 A-level exams. If you're yet to see part one of this video, feel free to watch it up here. So with all that said and done, let's get straight into the video. So for section B of the AQA A-level exams, you get a choice between three separate essays. Each of these essays come as a bundle, so you have to do a 15 marker and a 25 marker. For the 2022 microeconomic exam, the three essays won three different topics. The first topic was about the price mechanism and whether or not things should be provided by the government. The second topic was all to do with market failure. And the third topic was about wealth and income inequality. Now, I personally chose the third essay, the third topic on wealth and income inequality. And as a result, the 15 marker I was faced with in the exam was this one right here. It reads, explain the main causes of inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes. 15 marks. Now 15 markers I pretty much had down on lock in the exam and I just followed the same structure for pretty much all 15 markers I was faced with. And this structure was simply to introduce three separate points, explain them all in detail, provide a good application and analysis, and that was it. So with that being said, here's my response to this 15 mark question. The first main cause of income inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes is wage differentials. Wage differentials refer to different individuals in different industries earning different wages. Wage differentials can arise as a result of individuals having different MRPs, marginal revenue products. This can be due to a multitude of factors, for instance, different levels of skills, different levels of education, different levels of experience, etc. As the demand for labour comes from an individual's MRP, those with higher levels of skill, experience and education are demanded more and in turn receive higher wages. For instance, becoming a heart surgeon requires greater levels of skill and education than becoming a cleaner. Hence, the MRP of a surgeon is greater than that of a cleaner. Hence, the surgeon is demanded significantly more and receives a higher wage. This is one cause of inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes. The second main cause of inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes is labour market discrimination. Figure 1 shows an example of labour market discrimination. The employer, who holds the prejudice, believes the MRP of one group to be greater than the MRP of another group. In this instance, they perceive the MRP of men to be greater than the MRP of women. This therefore leads them demanding more male employees than female employees and paying men a higher wage than women. Seen on figure 1 by the fact that WM is greater than WW and QM is greater than QW. This would also cause inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes. Thirdly, age could be a potential cause of inequality in the distribution of pre-tax incomes. The first reason for this is due to older individuals having been in the labour force for a longer duration of time. Hence, they have developed more skills and experience in their respective industry. As a result, it would be expected that they have a greater MRP than younger individuals. As a result, they are more likely to receive a higher wage rate, leading to inequality in the distribution of pre-tax income. Moreover, it may be possible that younger individuals are negatively discriminated against, and hence the perceived MRP of older individuals is greater than it actually is in reality, thus meaning the wage rate of older individuals is greater, leading to further pre-tax income inequality. And that's really as simple as all my 15 mark responses were. Three separate points, all well explained and all developed sufficiently. As you can see, the examiner left a comment on my response. They said, valid issues with sound knowledge, good application of economic concepts, and clear logical chains of reasoning. And that is genuinely all you need to do to get 15 out of 15 on these AQA A-level 15 markers. By the way, although that was a 15 out of 15 response, it does not mean therefore that the response was perfect. As a matter of fact, it was far from it. I could have developed my points a bit more, I could have explained things a bit more concisely, etc. But the whole point of exams as a whole is that you don't need to be perfect, all you need to do is be good enough to get those full marks or those marks you want to achieve. With all that done, let's move on to the 25 marker for this part of the exam. The question reads, evaluate whether the best way to reduce inequality in disposable income is to reduce differences in pre-tax incomes rather than through taxes and welfare benefits. So here's my response to that 25 mark question. Reducing differences in pre-tax incomes refers to measures such as reducing wage differentials and labour market discrimination. Reducing inequality through taxes and welfare payments refers to a more progressive taxation system and a larger financial cost to the government. This essay will argue that reducing differences in pre-tax incomes is more effective as it does not distort incentives and allows individuals and households to work for their wage. And if you've seen part one of this video or any other video I've really done on these 25 markers or these A-level economics essays, you can see it's pretty much the exact same introduction structure as I use throughout everything I do. The only difference here is that I don't really do any definitions as the essay doesn't really call for you to define anything. But what I do is I introduce my points, I frame the essay, and then I say what the essay will argue. Moving on to that first paragraph. One way that inequality can be reduced 
via reducing differences in pre-tax incomes could be via the government providing education and training schemes. This would give individuals in the labour force an opportunity to improve their skills and education. As a result, it is likely to increase the productivity of workers, which in turn will improve workers' MRP. As the demand for labour is derived from an individual's MRP, this policy would increase the demand for workers who have attended and benefited from such schemes. As a result, the wage rate would increase and the quantity of workers employed would increase. This would lower the gap between high income and low income workers, hence reducing differences in pre-tax incomes. Another measure that could be used to reduce differences in pre-tax incomes would be policies to reduce labour force discrimination. A short term solution would be implementing quotas, which has been done in Sweden. These quotas mean that a company has to employ a certain number of individuals from a certain group in a certain position. For example, a certain number of women need to be employed in managerial positions. This would help increase the income of women and hence also reduce the income inequality. A long-term solution would be changing social norms within the work environment. For instance, if more women became CEOs of FTSE 100 companies, this could change the opinions and norms of other companies who may then let go of their prejudices and discrimination. However, both of these policies may be limited in terms of how effective they are. Firstly, there is a large financial and opportunity and cost incurred to the government for providing education and training schemes. It could be argued that there were better uses for government time and money. Moreover, quotas in the labour force could lead to an inefficient allocation of resources, as it could result in individuals being placed in roles they are not qualified for. It could also result in individuals missing out on positions they are qualified for. In addition to this, there is no guarantee that low income and low MRP workers will attend the schemes provided for them. For instance, it may be that they are not incentivized to increase their MRP due to bounded rationality and hyperbolic discounting. To combat this, the government can make attendance to education and training schemes mandatory. However, individuals may feel as if this invokes on their personal freedom and liberty, hence this is not likely to be effective. So I've done my point about reducing pre-tax incomes through either labour market discrimination and also increasing people's MRPs, and I'm now going to talk about other ways to reduce income inequality, i.e. through the taxes and welfare payments they talk about in the question itself. Alternatively, reducing income inequality would be achieved through a new, more progressive taxation system. For instance, a taxation system that increases the tax rate for the top bands and reduces the tax-free income, e.g. from £12,500 to £15,000. This way, the government will still receive the same or similar amounts in tax revenue, but the disposable income of low-income groups and households would increase. However, this policy may not be as effective as first seemed. The Laffer curve in figure 1 shows why this may not be the case. If the tax rate was initially at T1 with a tax revenue of TR1, then increasing the tax rate may actually lead to a decrease in the tax revenue. This is shown as T2 is greater than T1, but TR2 is less than TR1. The first reason for this is that increasing the tax rate for high income earners is likely to increase the rate of tax avoidance. The second reason is due to brain drain. This is where high income earners may choose to move abroad to a location where the tax rate is lower. Hence, the tax revenue received from the government would be lower. It is possible that this could worsen inequality, as high income earners are more likely to be owners of businesses, brackets, entrepreneurs. If they decide to move abroad, they will move their businesses with them. This is more likely to happen nowadays due to a more interconnected and globalised world economy. This would decrease domestic employment opportunities and individuals may lose their income, hence worsening income inequality. Furthermore, this policy may expend government resources as the increased tax avoidance and tax evasion would have to be regulated by the government. Income inequality could be reduced by increasing welfare payments. These refer to payments received by low-income groups directly from the government. However, welfare payments have also a large financial and opportunity cost to the government, as the money used could have gone elsewhere. In addition to this, it could be argued that increased welfare payments would distort incentives. Individuals and households may no longer have the incentive to improve their MRP and seek a higher wage as they become dependent on the welfare payments. Reducing differences in pre-tax incomes is likely to be more effective in the long run than taxes and welfare payments. This is because training schemes allow individuals to increase their MRP which will increase their wage. For instance, if a different political party were to be elected, the taxation and welfare payment schemes may be eradicated slash altered and inequality could return to what it was originally. However, if there was a change in political party or unexpected economic shock, those who have developed their skills, hence improving their MRPs, will still be earning a higher wage and have a larger disposable income. In addition to this, policies to reduce differences in pre-tax incomes may be more effective as they are more equitable and hence also more direct. For example, only individuals that take action and attend training schemes reap the benefits. 
Similarly, it is fair and equitable to reduce labour market discrimination, whereas taxes and welfare payments treat everyone the same, which could be seen as unfair slash inequitable. Now the reason I've done this almost conclusion to my conclusion paragraph is because I didn't think I had enough evaluation in the essay thus far. As you can see, the examiner wasn't fully convinced, although they did mark this paragraph as basically completely evaluation. I think the point I'm trying to make here is that reducing pre-tax income inequality may be better as it's a bit more equitable, i.e. reducing labour market discrimination is fair, whereas maybe altering taxation systems could be seen as not fair. So you get rewarded for the effort you put in, whereas benefit systems may benefit everyone regardless of what sort of effort you're putting in to increasing your own wage rate. Again, I probably could have explained that a bit clearer, but that's the point I'm trying to make there. And now let's move on to my conclusion. To conclude, the best way to reduce inequality in disposable income is to reduce differences in pre-tax incomes rather than through taxation and welfare benefits. This is due to the fact it is more equitable and fair, encourages work over welfare, and doesn't distort market incentives. Whereas taxes and welfare benefits may encourage laziness where individuals no longer have any desire to improve their MRP. They also carry large costs in the form of government, financial and opportunity costs, drain drain and tax avoidance. And that is my complete 25 marker, which the examiner deemed to be a 25 out of 25 response. Again, like the 15 marker, this is far from perfect and please don't look at this as a perfect response. I made grammatical mistakes, I didn't explain things fully, I could have added evaluation here and there, but the whole point is that it's good enough to achieve that top band and that top mark. In terms of the comments my examiner left, we can read them here. A very comprehensive response, covering all three methods with clear analysis, good use of economic concepts and supported evaluation throughout. And I think that comment summarises what essays in A-level economics should really be about. Clear analysis, good knowledge, good use of economic concepts and the constant evaluation throughout. And I really don't think there's much more to go into regarding these two responses. As you can see, they're not perfect, but it was enough to get me 15 out of 15 and 25 out of 25. As always, thank you for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and hopefully I'll see you soon.